You're listening to the Martin Houston Show on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Eddie Garcia. News from the NFL where New York Jets holdout pass rusher Hassan Reddick has requested a trade from the team who acquired him in a trade with the Eagles this offseason. The Jets have responded by saying they have no plans on trading Reddick, who's got one year left in his contract that pays him $14.25 million. In baseball games of note, battle of division leaders with the Dodgers beating the Brewers 5-2. In his return from injury, Ellie's Mookie Betts hit a home run, drove in three, and Shohei Otani hit his 36th home run of the year. The worst team in baseball, the White Sox, roll over the team that came into the night tied with the best record in baseball, the Yankees, 12-2. to New York drops a half game back of idle Baltimore atop the ALE standings. Astros beat the Rays 6-1. to Houston has won six in a row. They moved a half game up on idle Seattle for the top spot in the AL West. Guardians get by the Cubs. 9-8, to eight, Cleveland leading the AL Central. Battle of AL wildcard teams. Twins, 8-3 winners over the Royals. Alabama, first and 10 on the 12. Again, Houston. He's got a hole. He's over. Alabama touchdown. Now, I'm just wondering if your listeners <laughs> know how good a football player you were. Uh, I can still see you playing that full black, knocking those players out of the out of the way in there. I believe I could have run behind you. <laughs> Martin, I can remember when we came to center and you were playing full back up there. And I saw you in the weight room and watched you watch you work out in the weight room. At least you pick up you were strong enough to pick up the whole weight room. I wanted to pick it and I run in that pitch and think <laughs> biggest, biggest mistake we ever made. The Martin Houston Show with national championship winning fullback Martin Houston giving you one hour of intense, hard-hitting analysis from an insider's perspective. It's time for the Martin Houston Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Good morning. Welcome into the program. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. We're excited to have you on up and Adam with us on this beautiful Tuesday morning. It's the Martin Houston Show, and that's the Martin Houston Show, powered by Box Eye Care. That's right. Box Eye Care uh, has what you need, so go check them out. Uh, located at their new location off of Oscar Baxter Drive. Uh, that's uh, Box Eye Care 205-342-0660. They have a brand new lab located there uh, where they can do lots of the things that you used to have to send off to another uh, facility. They can do them right there in-house. It's more service, more frames, competitive prices, everything that you come to expect. Uh, and more, same great service as Box Eye Care 205 342 Check them out online at boxeyecare.com or stop by their current location, uh, their brand new location located at 5003 Oscar Baxter Drive. All right, we'll keep things rolling right here uh, this morning. Remember that this is the day that the Lord has made, so let's rejoice. And be glad in it. Take some time today to notice someone, love someone, serve someone. Be the difference you want to see in the world today. We have X on with us. We have DC on with us. Good morning, guys. How y'all doing? Oh, doing great. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. Good, good. Hey, listen, we got several topics we can hit on today. Of course, DC, we'll get your thoughts uh, from the first scrimmage. Uh, what's your biggest takeaways? Uh biggest concerns uh, that you may have, uh, you know, keep your eyes on, you know, and you can complete that statement. Uh, we also got the AP Top 25 that dropped yesterday, uh, and uh, we, uh, Wyatt and I briefly talked about the Texas uh, situation. They're still, in the, even in the AP poll, sitting at number four, uh, but news coming out of Texas. Uh, does it impact your thoughts uh, with these guys who voted on the AP poll, which I'm sure was before the news broke yesterday? Uh, would they change their vote now? Um, does it give you a little pause and concern for Texas? Or maybe you're like me, you never was on the Texas bandwagon to begin with. 
Also, uh, what's your biggest thought controversy there? Am I just wearing crimson colored glasses uh, that should be uh, a little shade of red, meaning Georgia red? I just don't see it yet. I'm going to have to see something before I say something. So, uh, guys, I, any, anything jumping out uh, at UDC uh, that, that I don't have in the topics of conversation that you say, hey, listen, Martin, I, uh, this, is, this is what we talked about on our podcast that dropped yesterday. This is what people have been asking me about. Well, I mean, we, we talked about on our podcast about all the things you've just mentioned, but also uh, we talked about one thing that I hadn't heard a lot of people talk about. Some people have been mentioning it, but just listening to Coach DeBoer after the uh, after the uh, scrimmage and what he talked about, you know, it, it seemed like uh, he was very general in who did what in the scrimmage. And I know we've got a lot of reports of people who went and could talk about different things, but you know, before we were used to getting some specific uh, statistics from Coach Saban on, who did this and who did that. And it seems like uh, he didn't do that. And some of my people were asking why I thought that was. And, and what I said was, I think because of a new offense we got going in this year, he's playing it close to the vest because he didn't want everybody to know who's going to be doing what and how they're going to do what. And I'm looking forward to see this offense. I think it's going to be a really different, high-powered uh, uh, offense that's going to be a, a step up from last year. And I think we're all going to be surprised when we try out there against Western Kentucky about what we can do. You know, well, I mean, it, everything is new for us except for, I think, our punter. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the defense is uh, definitely brand new at, uh, in terms of the approach. Um, but, you know, something that we haven't talked a lot about, and I'd like to get all you guys' thoughts on it, you know, when you look at this defense uh, at, uh, I'll let you go first, uh, do you find it ironic that that we've been able to transition to the four to actually without a lot of heartache and pain um, and in the only place we had to recruit to was really uh, we had to bring in some extra safeties um, and, and we got some experience at corner but overall we really didn't have to recruit anybody else. We just had to, you know, put some people in the right place. Do you do you think that that really speaks to how much Coach Saban was trying to get to this point and had been recruiting to this style of defense? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I think that you saw it throughout the years. I mean, how many times last year did we see it was Dallas Turner on one side, Justin V on the other with – uh, Otis and Keenan or Smith or whoever on the inside. So I think this is definitely something that Bama had been working toward, and now you're actually seeing it come to fruition with this switch in coaching philosophies fully. But this is definitely something Alabama had been working on and working toward the last few years under Saban. Do you, see, you have any thoughts there? I'm going to dig a little deeper on that thought process. Yeah, I think if, uh, X is right on the uh, right on point. I was talking to someone the other day, interacting with one of the, my listeners on the podcast, and and you know, next week, this week was my offensive in depth dive, and next week I'm on my defensive dive, and they were just asking ahead, uh, you know, thinking oh, is this going to be so much different than Coach Saban's defense that we're not going to recognize it? How are we going to compete? How are we going to do? And and I wanted to, rem- I tried to remind them uh, just exactly what X just said, you know. We're saying this is a new defense, but Coach Saban's defensive philosophy had been putting this type of personnel on the field for Alabama uh, this past year and even the year before. We've seen it in the different packages that he had, and we had been recruiting toward that type of player. Uh, We had gone away from the old-style Coach Saban player to a new style, and so I I don't think that we were – and I don't think the cupboard was bare at all. I think – you know, it was natural that we had to build up the safety position uh, just because of the departures that we had in in, uh, gradua- in graduation, NFL, and transfer. So there's no doubt. But I, I really think if you go in depth that you will see, uh, uh, you know, a phases of this defense uh, that we ran last year and the year before, and we did it well. Yeah, why do you have any thoughts on that before I come back in? 
he might be he might be answering the phone there. But yeah, when you look at this DC, I, I look at it from this viewpoint, uh, guys. It is it is <laughs> everybody thinks that this is a new defense. This is our third down defense. I mean, this is literally what we ran. We called it nickel. Uh, or, you know, um, at, at times we called it the nickel defense or whatever package saving name was. But there were numerous plays we had on there. The difference is this is now our base defense uh, instead of our nickel defense. So we play this on first down, second down, third down. Uh, and, and I think that because of that, what will look different, D.C. and X, is the fact that there'll be a lot more looks. Um, you talking about moving parts? The, the ability to have moving parts when you have a guy like Malachi Moore or Devontae Smith or, or something like that. And like I said, I, I still cannot keep all these, which one's a husky and which one's a bandit and which one's a, a wolf and a dog and a cat and, and, and all of that. But when, when I can tell you where, where they're at, when they put Devontae Smith or Malachi Moore on the edge to bring pressure, um, it's, it's, it's tough on a on a big boy to um, to to get out there and stop that that safety coming off the edge versus being able to get to a guy like a Malachi Moore. I mean, a, a guy like a, a, you know a Brassfield or uh, uh, I said Brassfield Dallas Turner uh, coming off the edge. Uh, it's it's a little tougher on a guy blocking a, a guy like that in space. So I think we're going to see a lot more looks, DC. Oh, no doubt, uh, definitely a lot more looks, and and you're going to see, uh, you know, this that husky position from base. I can tell that you know it's a hybrid position uh, that's going to actually uh, on first, second down is going to be close to the line of scrimmage and. And you know, maintaining their whole areas, but also big on the run game. You know, kind of like a Mark Barron in, in in times past that that uh, Coach Saban had on that, that that eventually, you know, he uh, uh, he he morphed into that in the NFL, playing that same type of position in the NFL. So I see you know Devonta Smith and others that are going to be in that position, uh, not only instrumental in the passing game from a from a you know, nickel defense, but instrumental in the edge rushing, uh, putting pressure on the quarterback and run game as well. And, that, and that's a lot of different places you can move them in, 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 in a lot of different looks out of that one position. Yeah. Without a doubt. X, any thoughts from you before we get to break? No, I mean, I think that pretty, I think DC hit it, the nail on the head with that assessment of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be fun to watch, uh, watch these guys do what they do uh, in terms of, just moving them around, I cannot wait. Uh, there's going to be time when we see probably six DBs out there and just one linebacker and and all of that. Uh, and so if we go to that, uh, let's talk about on the other side, what's going to be important, uh, D.C., um, in terms of our defense being able to hold us on um, against uh, the AP Top 25 team versus Tennessee who are we going to be better prepared to, to stop and struggle with? And did we see or hear any of that coming out of the first scrimmage? As we go to break here, I want to tell you about North River Timber Company, uh, Courtney White and his team. Uh, he's a registered forester here in the state of Alabama. Uh, they have been uh, doing forest management, reforestation, and appraisals in four Alabama counties. That number continues to grow. They love the opportunity to help you. Uh, and if you want to reach out to them and help, help have them help you, call 205-242-5127, 205-242-5127, uh, and they will take care of you. That's North River Timber Company, and they are there to serve you. And Courtney White says, hey, listen, money in the bank when it comes to your land Get the full potential of your land called North River Timber Company. 
100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa Traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. A very good Tuesday morning to you. We're getting started on a pretty light note. Now I will say you've got some construction right there on 2059 on the eastbound lanes between Western Bypass and Tuscaloosa Coaling. This is causing some delays that you're having to kind of put on. When the power is out, you can too with Spire rebates up to $600 when you switch to natural gas. Learn more at spireenergy.com slash reliable. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky mostly sunny today, the high for this afternoon around 94. Tonight, mostly fair with the low at 72. Tomorrow, partly to mostly sunny, the chance of a shower or a thunderstorm by late afternoon. The high tomorrow at 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's time for the Martin Houston Show with the same hard-hitting, no-nonsense approach in which he played the game. Martin will take you inside the locker room, down on the field, and across the goal line with his in-depth analysis. Welcome back in to the Martin Houston Show, powered by Fox. I care. That's right. Power by Box. I care. We're live, local, ready to get things rolling right here on your home for Alabama Sports. Don't forget to go get your officially licensed, co branded Alabama swag. Uh, start with the Legacy con- uh, Collection. Also, premium jerseys, caps, and more. Make Fullbacks Great Again uh, Collection, as well as just some Martin Houston uh, collage based uh, inventory support. Us by going to athletesthread.com forward slash collections forward slash Martin dash Houston. Also want to give you guys a heads up. Make plans to join us this Thursday for the West Alabama High School Pitchkin Preview Show. We'll kick things off with uh, week number one. Uh, we'll do just kind of a roundabout, just talk a little bit about the content of the show What's the purpose of the show? We'll be highlighting uh, teams from around West Alabama, uh, and it'll broadcast in the exact same places that it'll broadcast here on Tide 100.9, 12.30 a.m., as well as on the live streams uh, in the various outlets as well. So looking forward to that. That's the West Alabama High School Peach Game Preview. We'll start this week off on Thursday Next week is a little different, but I just can't not cannot not highlight the show. Uh, the game of the week will be Gordo and Fayette, uh, even though they play on Thursday. Uh, and we'll actually air the the interviews as the kickoff of the game is, is going. But uh, still, feel like that's a game worth highlighting. One of the big games in West Alabama. Uh, as far as matchups and communities, et cetera. So make plans to join us. Uh, the first three weeks will be at 7 o'clock, and then once September rolls around, we'll transition to 6 p.m. 6 p.m., not a.m. We'll still be doing the Martin Houston show at 6 a.m. All right, D.C., we're back in. Uh, we were talking about this defense and who we'll struggle with and, and, and think, or who will be our biggest test because Saban couldn't make the transition – uh, to this defense effectively, and I think that was part of where we had the confusion. Pete Golding could not make this transition, and we we continue to see for the last, I say the last four or five years, we were always going to be see at least one one time a game in a big game, if not multiple, somebody somewhere running wide open, especially when you ran against the masterminds like Tarkeesian, uh, Hypo, Kiffin, they were going to get at least one one big play where a guy was running wide open, D.C. I agree, I have, absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't think we ever adapted to that. We, we never saw it. Uh, and we saw some great uh, we saw uh, some great play callers take advantage of that, You know, especially Tennessee. Uh, in that Tennessee game, we had multiple chances to stop Tennessee and, and gave up big plays uh, because, because of that defensive philosophy. So I look. I look for this defense to be completely different with teams against like against teams like that. If I'm looking at teams that uh, uh, we may have trouble with, or we may see in the in the playoffs or in our schedule. The only team on our schedule I think that uh, gives us trouble with this defense, if if they do, it would be Georgia. But I'd have to see Georgia play to, to 
see how they're going to be able to attack and do. All right, X, any thoughts from you on that before we bring in Pat? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a lot of what happened, what took place. But this new regime, I think I, I've got a lot of confidence in them, man. And they, they've said all the right things. So they just keep letting this thing play out. Yeah, I think without a doubt, they're used to running this defense. And if you go back to uh, uh, Hugh Freeze days, uh, you guys may or may not know this. Uh, our our D.C. dad was a D.C. at Ole Miss um, a few years back when they got a couple wins against us, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, we'll talk about that. And, hey, Pat wants to talk a little bit about uh, this defense and whether or not um, – uh, whether or not it's shown a potential weakness for us and whether or not uh, our defense can do what it needs to do. So, Pat, you're in with D.C. and Xavier. Uh, take it away. Hey, good, good morning, D.C. Uh, D.C., Anna, since you don't necessarily wear crimson-colored glasses, but uh, I want to know about all uh, these defensive backs that uh, – uh, Defensive backs seem to have a, a little bit different philosophy. They're not uh, uh, playing uh, the players, which they're actually looking for the ball a little bit too. And uh, do you think that this is going to, uh, from what I understand about the scrimmage, that we did not have near as many uh, defensive penalties uh, as what we've had uh, in the past, I mean, we seem to be our D-backs uh, over the last several years have been getting quite a few uh, interference penalties. Yeah, Man, I think uh, the main philosophy, Pat, that uh, the change in the defensive backs, uh, absent the schemes and the, and the position they put in, is the the playing of the, of the ball and not playing the phase. Uh, where in the past, they would play the phase of the of the player and, uh, and playing the this time looking at the ball and playing the ball gives you a better opportunity to see where the ball is and uh, less opportunity to, to interfere with the player. Uh, so I think that's true. I think the defense is going to be improved in that area. I think we're going to be improved in in, in more discipline penalty wise all around. I think it's been a key thing that we hadn't talked much about, but it's been taught really well in practice uh, and held accountable when they when they do make penalties. So I think that we're going to see less penalties overall, but you're yeah, definitely on the defensive side of the ball. And I think it's I think it's a strength in my opinion, uh, the way that would teach the players to to uh, look for the ball. But I think that's another reason that that's done is in this type of off uh, defense, uh, you got players that are given a little ra- more of a range. Uh, to, to to play athletic and make athletic plays. And to do that, you have to look at the ball uh, in order to know where the ball is coming in your area to make those type of plays. So I, I really think they're expected uh, to look for the ball, go for the ball, and and, and run to the ball. So I think that's going to I think it's gonna okay. be a big plus in this, in this defense. Yeah. And uh, well, next question is that uh, my team take out. Go ahead, Martin. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead, Martin. Uh, yeah, because I want to follow up on something before we move on. Uh, X, uh, when you look at this, you know, you're, you're right, Pat. The, the, he said specifically that the PIs were down. Um, the, the One of the biggest things uh, I saw, uh, X, to get your thoughts on, what, what did – was it that Saban refused to change overall or was it that one thing that he refused to change that Pat just hit on? Was that the biggest Achilles heel – because teams knew that in critical moments uh, that they could use the back shoulder throw or the under throw in the deep ball. Once quarterbacks started doing these seven on sevens and got good enough, and they could execute on the back shoulder throw and the uh, uh, under throw the deep ball, is that one thing enough to possibly change a couple of the big games that we lost? Oh, one hundred percent. I mean. We saw it time and time again, and how many times – I can't even count how many times I complained about, hey, play the ball, look for the ball. And that's something that the that these coaches have specifically said that they are working on is the DBs playing the ball instead of always just playing the man. So I think it can be very impactful in certain games. Times that we – we all knew it. We all knew it, Pat. I, I I will make a bold prediction. You ready for a bold prediction, Pat? 
You ready for this bold prediction? Alabama will have yeah, hey, fewer. Yeah. Alabama will have fewer pass interferences this year. I don't know how bold that is, but I'm still predicting it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, hey guys. I will tell you why we're going to have different. The way this thing's going to be different. Iron sharpening iron. DC. Before uh, this season started, uh, we had a thing in the afternoon with a bearded wonder. I call him the bearded wonder. Uh, and uh, he, he asked the question, who was going to be our uh, uh, best uh, wide receivers? And it's not the guy from Washington. Hey, it's iron sharpening iron. I, my two, I had two, uh, Ryan Williams and Cole Adams. Cole Adams has blinding speed. Do you hear me? And he has very, very good hands. He did not get to play much his senior year. Brian, I mean, Cole Adams may be one of our best uh, pickups at wide receiver. He was, one of the, uh, as a junior, he was one of the top uh, uh, wide receivers in the state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma wanted him pretty bad. And uh, they see, it, it appears that from everything I'm hearing about practice, that uh, that Cole Adams is starting to run with the ones as a slot receiver. But having Ryan Williams iron sharpening iron, that because uh, Ryan, I had uh, Ryan, I watched him at a, a little bit in high school, but uh, I really watched him closely at the uh, Under Armour game. And at the Under Armour game, he was playing against two of the finest uh, cornerbacks at different times that they had to offer. And, I mean, he made them look silly. Go ahead, DC. Uh, I think, I can we'll go to break. Yeah, I think you're right on point, Pat. Uh, you know, I've always said on, on all, everything I've talked about this season so far about fall practice is I think you got three three uh, wide receivers in Jeremy Bernard, Kendrick Law, and Kobe Prentice. And three other wide receivers in Ryan Williams, uh, Cole Adams, and I think you left out Caleb Odom. I think those six are going to be six that's going to see most of the play in time. And could be others. I believe Manuel Henderson is going to get in there as well. But uh, I think that you got when you talk about iron sharpening iron. I think you you, you talk about playing with other players like that. But you got to look at the other side of the ball. We got some freshman defensive backs that are making that are that are coming up uh, we hear their name called more like Xavier Mincy and Xavier Brown Red Morgan uh they're getting the benefit of going against the second team players and elevate and both of them are elevating into starting roles or or contribut- contributing roles this year so i think you got you hit the nail on the head as far as what what you see coming out of this Alabama fall camp practice i think we're going to be much better in wide receiver much better in defensive backs than anyone gives us credit for yeah, and, yeah. and I, I'm not ready to go, Pat. Pat, I, I, I appreciate you. I love you. But Cole Adams is not going to be our top receiver. Cole Adams will have impact this year, but Cole Adams will not be one of the top two receivers. Um, okay, you, you, okay. You, I hear you, Morton Houston. You, 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 you're forgetting, Pat, Cole Adams is having a good offseason. But you act like the other guys aren't either. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we just had a scrimmage. We just had a scrimmage, Pat, and, uh, and, and, you know, they spread the ball around. Cole Adams is good. Cole Adams will have impact. Um, but um, there's, a, there's a long way from impact and being the top one or two receivers. If Cole Adams – I will make this prediction, Pat. If Cole Adams and Ryan Williams are our best two wide receivers, uh, we, we will not be playing for a national title. Oh, Martin Houston. Wow. Wow. Now, come on. Man, uh, hey, it could, hey, it could be, it could be, hey, you, it could be Hunter Renfro 2.0. Wow. You making a statement, Martin. Hunter Man, Renfro uh, hey. was good. Pat, Hunter Renfro was good, but Hunter Renfro was not the top two receiver. He had key moments. Did you forget who else was on that team? Hunter Renfro, yeah. I'll let you respond to X to that Dan before we get to break. Do what now? Dan, Mike Williams, who's a first-round draft pick, Deion Kane, several other guys that are also NFL players, yeah. Yeah, the wide receiver was saying. Uh, Hunter Renfro had the success he had because of the other guys around him. That's right. And that's what I'm talking about. Exactly. That would be a game. I, I, I'll be bold enough, Pat, to say that there may be a game or two where 
Cole Adams may be the dude in that game because of the mismatch that he ends up with because the other team doesn't have enough DBs. You need to understand, Pat, don't always look at a stat or a result and think that that makes the guy the best. Sometimes the third or fourth guy has the best game or the In, and as a result of that best dude covering the top one, two, I'm, I'm going to say this and get the break. The, the, the number three receiver may be covered by the number three DB, and there may be a huge drop off by the number three DB. If you put Cole Adams at the number one slot right now, he's, he's not ready, Pat, to be a number one receiver. That don't mean he won't have a great season. That won't mean he won't have significant impact. I agree Cole Adams has made some plays and as a result has earned and worked himself on the field. But that's a long stretch from being the best receiver. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, hey, Ryan Williams is going to be the best receiver. Point blank simple. That I, is. I said he's but... going to be the go guy by the end of the season uh, for sure in – Based on some of the things coming out from scrimmage, he could be the best guy coming out game one. Uh, but uh, Kendrick Law, uh, Bernard, and Prentice all had good scrimmages. Pat, don't don't let oh yeah don't let in conversation. Uh, yeah, I'm, like, I, I'm uh, very I'm very happy with his wide receiver. Are you have a blessed with Martin Houston. Be careful, man. Right. Bye bye. All right, take care. Thanks, Pat. Come back on the other side. We'll keep the conversation going. We got a couple callers. Want to get to Pat? I mean, uh, DC. Uh, we'll get them in. We'll get your thoughts. Now through December 28th, Castrol Edge and Edge High Mileage Motor Oil are on rollback at Walmart. Claim based on sequence dine test under high load conditions versus API SP test limits. Hot. The sound of Bama Sports. Your show, your team. The Martin Houston Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Martin Houston Show. I want to encourage you to go check out Dixie Battery Supply. Dixie Battery Supply. They have all the batteries that you need to power all your devices. They buy junk batteries, and they have <coughs> excuse me. They, as I said, they have all of the different types of batteries to power your device. Uh, come check them out. Never feel powerless again. Stock up with batteries from. Uh, the Tuscaloosa store, the battery locations there. You can call them at 205-758-9190, 205-758-9190, or visit them online at DixieBatterySupply.com. All right. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, DC, uh, X, I love Pat. Um but uh, Pat likes to get me going early in the morning with some of his radical predictions. Uh, uh, I'll let you guys respond to my comments to him, and then let's get to Allen really quick. If you, either one of you want to comment on, I think Cole Adams has impact this year, which would be a huge step for a young man that, you know, came in without the hoopla. But, uh, um, you know, so I'll let it go. Yeah, I mean, I think Cole Adams will be a contributor. Uh, I think he's beyond a stretch right now to say that he'll be a top two receiver. If that happens, that means it's either been a really bad season overall or we've had a lot of injuries at that position. I think Cole Adams is a fine wide receiver, and I think he's going to be in the mix of the top six, seven wide receivers to get a lot, get some playing time. I think he can get on the field. I think he's shown flashes of brilliance. Uh, and I do think he's got one thing going for him that uh, that we all know. He's got a lot of other uh, players around him that are going to get a lot of the attention. And I think it's not it's not a coincidence that in practice 
three or five coaches that have spoke about the offense have called him by name and also called him Mr. Reliable. So I think he, he has a good knack for catching the ball when other when other players are covered or out. So I think he's going to have there maybe a game like Martin said where he's the top receiver. Uh, but it'll be because people have schemed uh, against other receivers and he's open and so and catches the ball. So I, I think Cole Adams is going to be a great player for Alabama. He's got a lot to mature, and, and down the road he might be very well a top receiver, but I'm not sure. This year will be a stretch, I think, uh, if that happens. Yeah, absolutely. And he and who knows? I mean, um, you know, uh, if, if that pans out, uh, the other side of that could easily be that Miro went down and him and Ty Simpson could have this unbelievable connection. But with it being what it is, with all of those dudes, uh, I think um, this offense will be very well spread. Cole Adams will be a contributor, and I think he will have impact. But ooh, that's a lot of dudes for him to pass to become top two. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Allen, uh, I mentioned earlier the top, um, the top AP top twenty-five. Uh, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> How do you put Georgia at number one? Please explain that to me. How do you put Georgia over, I mean, over Texas? I mean, you know, Oregon lost their quarterback. So where, do you, where are they getting these? Where are they just, I mean, I understand Bama being five, but where do you get, where, do they, where are they getting these numbers at? I mean, you know, what, please explain that to me. DC, I'll let you go first. I have, yeah, I think the, AP is a joke, but anyway. Well, I think it just comes on Georgia's uh, reputation. Uh, you know, Carson Beck coming back, uh, Kirby Smart's uh, coaching. I think that's what, kind of where these AP voters are getting it from. Okay. I don't necessarily Hold on, DC. DC, DC, what does Carson Beck coming back mean? Everybody says that. What did Carson Beck do last year that said this dude is – like the man, he is like, like I can understand that this was Joe Burrow coming back or Tua Tagovailoa coming back, but what has Carson Beck done? His numbers are no different than Jalen Milrose, uh in in in, in many capacities. Um, he lost his go-to guy, um, and Mike Bobo is his offense coordinator. Yeah, I, I'm not saying I agree with it at all. I'm just saying that's what the talking heads are, are going. They're all looking for looking for things of that nature to talk about. Now, I can give you the negative about Georgia, and I don't see them a number one team in the nation right now at all. Uh, of course, and I'm not looking through Christmas glasses because I don't have Alabama as a number one team either. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't see how they how the people can look. Georgia's not played a game yet. Let's see how they do against Clemson, and then we can reassess. Of course, I always think preseason – polls don't mean anything anyway in my opinion because no one can really know who's going to be the best especially with the texas team that's had the rash of injuries at, at running back lately uh, you know i don't i'm not even sure texas is a top five team now based on what we know and i definitely don't think ohio state's above oregon in my opinion you know i think i think there are other people that would, would look at that with uh you know reasonableness and say that oregon should be ahead of texas but they'll they'll play it out they'll get to play each other and we'll find out but I don't think that I don't think that definitely Georgia is a consensus number one team. Okay. Um, Alan, you got anything else? Yeah, I, I totally I totally agree. Uh, I mean, you know, is it just the, the hate on Alabama? Is it just the? I mean, uh, Ohio State. You know, they brought. I mean, they bought a team. You know, so where do you rank them at? They should be number one. Based <laughs> That's on right now. Ohio That's State's the most talented. Ohio State's the most talented roster in college football, and probably got one of the weakest schedules. Yeah, and so I don't know. I DC mentioned Oregon. I don't know what the love is for Oregon. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to show me that this guy can replace Bo Nix before I buy in, and um, and that he can take that defense from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten, which is gonna be more physical than what. Oregon played last year, so I, I don't know. But I just – All right. Hey, Xavier, I'll let you go on. Thanks, Ellen. 
Yeah, I mean, when you look at the top five teams, I think those are probably the top five teams in the country. But I'm not sure if that's the necessary order that I would have them in. Ohio State would be number one for me. Um, and then I probably would have had Texas, too, before the injuries. But, you know, when a lot of these decisions were made, it was before the injuries. So that's kind of how that played out with them. And then, then you know, once you get past that, it's Alabama, it's Georgia, it's um, Oregon. So – it's kind of a toss-up because of the things that each team lost. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and for me, I, I mean, it's Ohio State's the number one team for me. Um, and and I probably would have Georgia number two, uh, you know, just based on the talent of their roster. I probably have Alabama three. I was I'm I, Texas and Oregon. They're going to have to prove to me that they can compete in their new conferences. They may can. They may can. But Oregon and Texas uh, have have not played, you know, the type of schedule they're going to have to play. And neither has Ohio State. The only reason I'm putting Ohio State first is because of their – just the fact that they went out through free agency. And, and now the question is, can this coaching staff coach it? But Texas going to have to prove to me, Ewers had a great game against us. He was average – against everybody else as far as who he was playing against. You put any SEC school in Texas' schedule in the quarterbacks, Jalen Miro and Beck both have better numbers than Ewers had against the Big 12. That's just my opinion uh, because th- that's where they play. And I'm going to have to see Texas do it. And now with the injuries, I, I, I think Texas has a – even more difficult time because I think Ewers needed good running back play to help him. Oregon, you gotta just show me. I'm a, I, I, I don't. I haven't studied that, and I understand I have crimson colored glasses, but I have those crimson colored glasses because I have watched Alabama and seen Alabama more up close than have the other guys. So I, I, I feel more confident saying this team is in the top three, and if they mature, that they could be top five. So. Um, We'll get back on the other side. We'll keep the conversation going. DC, we'll get your thoughts on scrimmage, uh, what you have, have going there from the scrimmage standpoint, and we'll get Jay Robbie in on the conversation. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. We have picked up an accident on 2059. This in the eastbound lane right at Buttermilk Road. Now everything's been pushed to the left shoulder now. And traffic, actually, I don't see any delays on I-20. Buttermilk Road, yes, you do have slight southbound slow goes. Meantime, coming on up here to Lurleen Wallace, looking good on the northbound hookup to McFarland Boulevard. It's moving slow, but that's just intersection slow goes. With your Tuscaloosa traffic now, Tammy Thomas. Here's what's trending on the Tuscaloosa thread. Good Tuesday morning. Eight people, mostly from Tuscaloosa and Northport, have been arrested on electronic child solicitation charges. The West Alabama Human Trafficking Task Force said the arrests were made following an undercover operation targeting adults who arrange to have sex with minor children. The suspects range in the age from 19 to 48. Click TuscaloosaThread.com for more local news, sports, and weather coverage all throughout the day. It's absolutely free. Don Hartley, Town Square Media, Tuscaloosa. Coming up, coming up on The Game with Ryan Fowler. Hey, coming up on the Tuesday edition of The Game, Mike Dettelier will also feature Tony Sakalas. We're going to recap Alabama defensive players and coaches. That and a lot more starting at 2 p.m. here on The Game on Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama from Sentai Sports. The longest-running sports program. Experience the wow factor. Contact Shoot Masonry and Specialties at 205-887-3807 today and unleash your home's full potential. Interact with the Martin Houston Show by calling us at 205-342-9904. Or tuning into the Martin Houston Show on Facebook. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show, powered by Box I Care. We want to thank the great folks over at the venue for partnering with us uh, and becoming part of the team. We want to thank them for jumping in 
uh, in making themselves part of what we have going. It's your new favorite Tuscaloosa hangout. Uh, there's Eliza Sweet Shop. There's a Finney's Pub. And, of course, there's All Day Breakfast at Rama Jamma, uh, the, uh, right there at the venue, a venue Tuscaloosa dot com venue tuscaloosa dot com your new favorite tuscaloosa hangout all right uh j rob appreciate you sir um what you got for us good morning everybody i hope everybody's doing well doing well doing well good morning i uh i'm i don't understand all this georgia hype either i mean they can have no more and it don't bother me at all i mean it's it's a kiss of death anyway to be number one throughout the season so they can have it, but uh, anybody that's voting him, them number one is not looking at their schedule. I mean, they they have got a schedule. They finally have gotten a schedule like everybody else in the, in uh, in our uh, on the west yeah. side of the conference. Uh, yeah. They have, they have to get. They start off with Clemson, then they got to go to Kentucky, then they got to uh, come to Alabama. They also got to go to Texas, and they also got to go to Ole Miss, and yeah. they got Tennessee at home. So you, you, I just don't see them going through that schedule unscathed, and they may be scathed more than once. So that that's what I think about it. But uh, I'll hang up and listen to what you guys got to say. Love the show. Y'all have a great day. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Uh, just a couple quick things, and I'll let you respond, D.C. Uh, Timothy Robinson saying, I believe Georgia's la- uh, lack of discipline off the field is eventually going to transfer to on the field. We even mentioned Alabama not being as disciplined in the last few years, and it cost our penalties cost us a couple times. They and that they're beginning to look like Urban Meyer. You have uh, not the same, but similar. Uh, Curtis Moore II said it could be recency bias with Georgia in terms of what they've been able to accomplish, and you know, because of the long winning streak in the two natties, I get that. But when I look at the top five, DC. Alabama beat the Georgia team the last time they played, and two of the other teams, our existing coach beat them the last time they played with less talent. The only one that we didn't play or beat uh, as a program and as a coach is Ohio State. (laughs) So I'll let you respond. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with all the all the commenters, all the all the callers so far. I I, I think we all agree that uh, this is just just a, a media that was voting at the AP and coaches who decided, hey, let's put Georgia number one, uh, and don't really have a good reason for it. Uh, you know, I just don't. Like I said before, I don't put much stock in preseason polls. Everybody's got opinion. It's just an opinion on what you what they did last year and what you think they're going to do this year. But I do think they're overlooking Alabama in this. You know, I, you know, you talk about looking at those. Uh, Crimson colored glasses, but just the fact that uh, you've got a Jalen Milrow coming back, you got a you got a national championship caliber coach coming in. Uh, I don't I don't think we're going to miss a beat. I think we're going to be fine. So if you're looking, if you're asking me, everybody's got an opinion. I got an opinion. So I would say I'd have Ohio State number one. I'd have Oregon number two. I'd have Alabama number three. I have Texas four and Georgia number five. They'd all be in the top five, but I just have them, I just have them different places. All right. Well, uh, what was your biggest takeaway from scrimmage, DC? My biggest takeaway from scrimmage, <clears throat> two things. One is the, the the way it was handled. I thought it was organized. So I, I don't think, uh, you know, everybody's talked about how Coach Saban was so disciplined, organized, and how Coach DeBoer is so loose and let, letting things go. But that's not, that's not the impression I got at all. It was so organized. It was down to the scripted number of plays. He knew exactly how many of the ones got, how many of the twos got, and how many of the threes got, and so I loved the way it was organized. And then I also uh, loved the way that that uh, you had give and take. You had some offense making big plays, and you had defense making big plays. And, and I think any time you're in a scrimmage like that, when one overpowers the other all the way, you wonder, uh, you know, as the other side of the ball caught up with it. And I think that Alabama is in is peaking and, and progressing at the right time. We hadn't seen them peak yet there. They're on that upward trajectory of both sides of the ball playing good. And I think you saw both both sides of the ball have good plays. And so I'm excited about that. Yeah, well, in terms of uh, any player uh, or anything that you heard as a big takeaway uh, in terms of uh, the players? 
Well, I just I just heard from people I'll talk to. Of course, Ryan Williams was the name that everybody mentioned as having a big play. I think he had a big 50-yard touchdown pass from Jalen Milrow. Um, I also heard that there were some uh, good skill uh, skill skill players that, that we had other players in the wide receiver room, the running back room. Uh, I heard that Jalen Milrow had a really good day and, and it improved and gave his consistency. 